Hi everyone, this is New Sensei. Many of you have probably already seen my video Deconstructing Deadliest Warrior and I do intend to go through a few more historical entertainment or educational TV shows and documentaries to point out a few small things here and there but I want to dedicate this video to what I think is the biggest problem with demonstrations in general, whether it's an amateur demonstration or a high production value TV show. And for this video, I'm going to talk about a segment from a YouTube series, uh, Men at Arms Deadliest Weapons, which is a bit of a spin-off from the Men at Arms Reforged series, which is a great series. Really great to see weapons being manufactured. But this mini-series is about weapons in action, and there are a few videos so far. And the one I'm focusing on is the composite bow. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's very short, but it also perfectly highlights what is wrong with demonstrations. The expert in this segment is a stunt coordinator. This isn't the best choice, but it doesn't mean that he doesn't know what to do. And in fact, he's actually a pretty decent shot from horseback. I know the uh, test is fairly straightforward, but he is able to shoot from horseback without any gimmicky camera tricks. And then there's this. What you see here is the biggest problem with weapon demonstrations and historical documentaries which test weapons like this. It's the fact that producers have a tendency to use butted mail. What is butted mail? The mail armor or the chain mail as you might call it you see here is butted mail. The design of the rings is not what would have been used historically as armor. You will often hear people pointing this out in commentaries and critiques saying that historically armor would have been made using riveted mail. In this image you see riveted mail on the left side and butted mail on the right side. Butted mail is made by bending the ring around so that it's closed by having the ends touch together. Note however that the ring itself is not sealed closed. That means that while this provides some protection against cutting weapons, a penetrating weapon like a sword point, a spear or an arrow will fairly easily burst a ring or go straight through. In contrast, the riveted mail is closed using a metal rivet. This makes it far stronger against penetrating weapons. Historically, especially in Europe, the riveted mail you see on the left would have been used. The reason why you see a lot of butted mail in demonstrations is because it's much cheaper. Naturally, as producer trying to cut costs, you probably won't be using riveted mail. The problem with using butted mail is that it doesn't really prove anything. The mail itself is likely to be ahistorical. Additionally, it is not designed to defend against this particular kind of weapon. Unfortunately, what that means is that people watching these shows are misled into thinking that chain mail is weak against arrows, whereas in reality, it was actually fairly effective. You should also consider the density of the weave, the diameter of the rings, and the thickness of the rings. The mail that you see made in this image is so wide and spacious that you can just shoot the arrow through the ring. If you hit the ring, it will burst open due to the fact that it is butted mail and therefore has nothing stopping the ring from bursting apart. Also remember that mail was not worn by itself. It was typically worn over a layer of padded armor and that's typically a gambeson. What this means is that you have a layer of mail which is resistant against slashing and piercing attacks and beneath that you have an extra layer of thick padded armor which can absorb blunt trauma as well as provide additional protection against slashing and penetrating attacks. It was actually quite hard to wound someone wearing both mail and gambeson. And realistically, if someone could only afford one armor, it's most likely going to be the gambeson, not the male. The hosts in this show are very clear that this is an obvious kill shot. 
However, in real life, it would not have been so easy, especially if the target was wearing proper riveted mail and on top of padded armor. It just wasn't that easy. It might be a bit simpler to kill someone wearing only a gambeson, especially with a high power bow and with armor penetrating arrows. But this sort of protection would have been quite durable and it would protect the wearer from numerous kinds of attacks. That's why armor was a big deal. So the result of this kind of testing is that it reinforces the myths and misconceptions about armor and archery, especially the myth that chainmail is weak against arrows, when in reality it would have been quite effective. And this sort of testing is just plain sloppy. This particular series is notorious for that. Uh, half the sword testing isn't even against proper gel torsos. They just slash pillows and mattresses. So it's a very disappointing series and unfortunately it's the same sort of thing we see in many documentaries again either made by amateurs or professional studios uh, there are a few things that you should keep in mind and people should watch out for i do recommend um, thane thran as a channel to actually test properly set up dummies and armor and Gambisons. I also recommend Metatron for discussion on historical uh, weapons and armor because you know, these things are much more interesting and more authentic and it's nice to see both the theory and the practical side whereas when you have so much money invested into production value you don't have the correct money or funds to spend on proper experts and proper materials. Anyway, this is New Center. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.